Today I am here with the kind of a cool piano, and one thing that makes this piano kind of cool is this is Steinway from 1926. So basically, this piano was made, I believe, three years before the stock market, the stock market would have crashed and the Great Depression would have begun. So this piano was made three years before that, which is just a kind of an interesting fact, and it's a pretty cool piano. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to, you know, show you a little bit of the features this piano has, including ivory keys and stuff like that. And I'm going to play my usual pieces that I play in it, but then I'm going to show you a really cool feature about this piano as well, and I'll get to that in just a little. A little bit. But first I wanted to mention that, like I said, it has ivory keys. These are two-piece ivories. You probably can't see it from that far away in the video, but right at the tip of the black keys, there's a little line that seems to run all the way down the keys, and it's on each little key. And basically what this is, is the separation between the front piece of the two-piece ivory key and then the back piece. So the back piece would have gone here, and then the front piece would have been glued on here, and then over time, dirt will kind of settle in between that little teeny crack and cause a line. It's completely cosmetic. If you see this on a piano, nothing is wrong with the piano. That's just simply the way it aged and it's totally normal. But it's cool that it has ivory keys because something about ivory keys just makes them wonderful. They're sticky and they're glorious to play and they actually, they're absolutely wonderful to play. These ones are in really good shape too. There's really no chips or anything wrong with them at all. A lot of the times with these old pianos you'll see them, they have chips and stuff out of the keys. This one has none of that, which is really, really great. So what I'm going to do first here is on this piano, I'm going to play my test piece, and then I'm also going to play a couple of Bach pieces on it as well. And so hopefully you guys enjoy hearing the sound of this 1926 Steinway O. For an older and a small piano, this actually does sound pretty nice. I really do like the sound of it. Now, it has been restored at some point. It's got new strings on it, and I also believe the action has either been replaced or at the very least regulated. It has a substantial feel, but it's also pretty responsive, and it has a good feel to it. Let's play some Bach music on it and see how that sounds on this Steinway O. So that is the sound of Bach music played on this 1926 Steinway O. Now if you have sharp eyes, you might have noticed a couple of interesting things about this piano, and one of those features is that it doesn't just say Steinway and Sons on the fallboard. In fact, it doesn't even say Steinway and Sons at all. It simply says Steinway. Then underneath it says Duo Art Pianola. And if you lift up the music desk, you'll also see that there's some funny lines here. So if you lower this, and you lift up this, you'll see that there's a player role in here. Now, what makes this kind of interesting, and I'm not exactly sure where this is supposed to go. I guess it's just supposed to maybe doesn't do that. I guess you could probably just leave it closed, I guess, because you probably, you probably only open this for maintenance and to turn on the duo art system and to turn on and off the repeat and to replace a roll when it runs out. So I guess that's really the only thing you'd need that open for. But what's interesting about this is that it's been restored completely, not just the piano side of it, but also all the player mechanisms, and that usually doesn't happen with these. Usually someone will have one of these, you know, it'll be bought in the 1920s and it'll go around for a while, and then after a while it'll age and all of the mechanics will just kind of go dead. And then many people don't like these old style player pianos, so they'll gut all of the player mechanism and it'll just be 
a regular piano and usually they'll cover this up with a solid piece of wood so you can't look inside and see a hole. It'd be kind of neat if they put like a storage compartment in those, but I guess they don't. So anyway, usually you'll see these and they won't be players anymore, but this one is a player piano and it works very well. What's also neat is that many of these old player pianos have a hidden little compartment down here that you probably didn't even notice unless you're familiar with these, and this is where you have mechanisms. So this is the motor. This is how you start it. You've got these really nice switches that have a fantastic feel. So you turn this to the right to turn it on, and I'll do that in a minute. You also have a re-roll and a play switch. So basically, if you put it on the re-roll side and activate the motor, it will re-roll the roll and rewind it back to the beginning. Then if you put it on play and you reactivate the motor, it will play the piece. There's a tempo knob here. I've got it right about here. I don't know what piece this is or how fast it's supposed to be played, but right about here feels approximately right to me. There's also one that says a comp graduation. And I don't really know what that means. Is it dynamics? Is it speed of the accompaniment? I'm not exactly sure, but there's a knob there that says accompaniment graduation. Over here, there's one that says theme graduation, and then also bass and treble. So I don't know how that would control the dynamics of either half of the piano, but I guess you had a bass and treble EQ back in the 1920s for your piano. Then over here you have a switch that says normal, soft, and dance. So that might have been dynamics. It's at soft at the moment and it sounds really good. I haven't messed with it, but maybe in this video I'll switch it around and see exactly what it does. I would imagine that that's volume and dance is for when you're at a, a grand old ball or whatever in the 1920s and you put it on dance mode and it plays louder so everyone can hear it at the party or whatever. That's my guess, but let's hear what it's gonna play. Maybe if any of you guys are well versed in I don't know what piece this is. Maybe someone out there will know, but let's hear how this sounds. So that is how the duo art pianola sounds. It sounds pretty cool. I have no idea what song this is. Maybe someone out there knows. What's interesting is it seems to me like it's able to do dynamics, which most player systems of the time weren't able to do, because it's playing pretty quietly, but I know that later on in the roll, like right here, it gets very loud. So that's kind of interesting. It could just be me. But it
So that is the sound of the Steinway Duo Art Pianola. It's a really cool thing, and it sounds like, to me, like I said in the thing, you might not be able to hear me all that well, but it sounds like it's doing dynamics, actually. It sounds like there's quiet parts and also really loud parts, which the traditional player role mechanism isn't able to do. Now, I'm not too well versed in what the Duo Art Pianola system is, but I'm willing to bet that it was Steinway's special way of having dynamics in the player roles. There's a switch up here that says Duo Art on and off, and I'll bet you if I flipped that, it would probably stop doing the dynamics. And there's also a switch up here that says repeat, and that's pretty self-explanatory. But some of these knobs in here, I don't know what they do. The accompaniment graduation seems to do nothing. The theme graduation seems to do nothing. And the bass and treble EQ seems to do nothing either. The normal soft and dance switch also did stuff. It moved the keys over. Like when you put it on dance, it moved them to the left. And when you put it on normal, it moved them to the left like an inverse soft pedal, I guess. So I guess what it was doing is it was moving the hammers just a little bit over so that it makes it louder, like I predicted. That's my guess. Because when you push the soft pedal down, the whole action slides over so that only two strings are being hit instead of one string, I mean, instead of three strings. So I assume what happens is when you activate the piano and have it on soft, it's slid all the way over. And then as you put it on these different modes, dance and normal, it comes back gradually to different positions. So soft is probably all the way over. Normal is probably in between. And then dance is probably in the normal resting position, like here. That's my guess. But as far as the other ones, what they do, I have no idea. Maybe someone who knows a lot about these can tell me. The instrument was completely restored. And all of this seems to be working fine. So I don't think these are broken. I'm just not exactly sure what they're doing. On the side note of being restored, all of these switches feel amazing. They feel so cool. Uh, I don't really know how to describe what they feel like, but they feel really cool. And there's all these like linkages and stuff underneath here that you can see too, and it's it's really neat. So that's also something that's kind of cool here. I don't know if I showed you guys the reroll thing, but let me just do that real quick. You put the switch onto reroll, you activate the motor, and it does this. It rewinds the uh, thing without playing anything, just so you're able to you know rewind back to the beginning and play it all over again. If you let go of the motor switch. It will stop, and then if you put it back on play and you hit the motor switch again, it will play more music again. So that is the Steinway Duo Art Pianola. Also, the tempo has a little slider here that shows you, I guess, how many beats per minute approximately, or I guess perhaps they're just random numbers. Um, how fast you're playing it. I had it right around 110, so maybe that's the appropriate speed for that piece. I have no idea. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little look at the Steinway Duo Arch Pianola. It's not something you get to see every day, certainly not in completely working condition. This is a very cool little uh, setup they have there. And then also this comes up, and then this goes away. So when it's all put away, it's hard to tell that it's that it's actually a player piano, but it is a player piano, and I think that's really cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Again, you don't get to see these very often. Usually, like I said, they're completely gutted, and they're not a player piano anymore. But it's really cool that this one's been able to be restored, and you can see what a player piano would have been like in the 1920s. This is a particularly nice one. I've never actually seen a grand player piano, actually, now that I think about it. I've seen you know the modern ones, Yamaha Disc Clavier, et cetera, but I've never seen a old mechanical player piano that, that was a grant, which is kind of cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing it as well. I think it's kind of neat, and hopefully you guys did too. If you did think it was neat, you might want to think about giving this video a like. And if you want, you can go check out my channel. I've got lots of cool videos of pianos, organs, keyboards, and all kinds of cool musical instruments. I've got a few other videos of player pianos as well, and uh, they're all kind of neat. If you like player pianos, you might want to go check those out. I don't know, up to you. But if you do go check it out, make sure to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification button to be informed of all of my future uploads. And if you do all that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. So here's a close-up of the roll mechanism here of the piano. You can see it a little bit better now. Probably the camera is a bit closer to the piano now. So you can see just how that looks like. It looks really cool. And it's kind of, I like how they hit it inside of the piano. It's not obvious that the instrument is a player piano. But if you know a little bit about pianos and you know what to look for, you can see that it is, in fact, a player piano with a roll tucked away inside. Now you can kind of see the tempo slider. And also on the left there are the two knobs. This one is the duo art system. And this one is the repeat on and off. And then this is the paper roll itself. Basically, the way these work, I believe, is there's a little bar under here with 88 holes in it. And I think it sucks air through those holes. And every time that a hole in the paper goes over one of the holes in this piece of metal behind there, it will activate that note for the duration of the 
open hole. What exactly the dotted lines mean, I don't exactly know. There's some kind of code that goes into making these, and I have no idea how it works. Because sometimes if you have an old player piano that has multiple instruments in it, like say it's got a, a, an organ and a xylophone in it, the rolls look the same as this. So how exactly those work and how exactly those make the other instruments trigger at different times, I have no idea. But this is basically what a piano player role looks like, and that's what you have. It's kind of cool.